Hey, it's news from heaven. Does God live in a specific location? I mean, it's, an, it's I guess it's interesting intellectually, but how's that going to help me with the stuff that's actually relevant <laughs> to my life? Because it seems like what we're dealing with is instead of where's God, it's why aren't I succeeding in my career? Why don't people like me? Why didn't I do this thing in the past? Uh, what if this thing happens to me? Whoa, how do I stop being upset in a way that's detrimental to my relationships? Whatever that stuff is, right? That's what matters. But you can't, there's nothing about God that isn't relevant to what's going on inside of us. As we learn about this position, what, what's the dwelling place? What's the at postal address for God? That should get right into what it is to have a mind and what is and isn't conducive to lasting happiness and peace. So let's see. I mean, I don't know. I haven't read what we're about to read. Yeah, I have. This is from, if you want to read it, and if you want to read everything above and below it, this is Divine Love and Wisdom. You can download it for free and follow along. Angels are in the Lord. This is where we start to get where, you know, where's the, the Lord? Okay. And where are angels? Angels are in the Lord, and the Lord is in them. And since angels are vessels, the Lord alone is heaven. Okay, cool. So it's not just about the Lord, it's about angels. But neither of these have anything to do with my daily life. Angel is a state of mind that is what we're all working to achieve. You can have that angelic mindset while you're still inhabiting a physical body. So everything that's relevant to what it is to be an angel is this it's like if you were trying to be a painter and this was saying master painters oh is something 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 van gogh oh is something 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 that's the relevance when we hear something about angels and this is also telling us what's the nature of what is it to be a person who's in a state like that heaven is called god's dwelling and god's throne yeah man we did People call it that sometimes. We wouldn't really talk about thrones that much these days, but okay, that's God's throne. And when Swedenborg was writing this, by the way, monarchy was a thing. It's a thing a little bit now, but that to say, you could say this is God's uh, cabinet or God's, I don't know, there's not a universal term for the seat of power in, in a country anymore. So people think that God lives there like a monarch in a realm. Yeah, here we are in heaven. You have this wonderful house up on a hill there. And up on that mountain, that's really expensive houses there. Even God has a place over there. Does it work like that? However, God, that is the Lord, keep this phrase in mind because that actually matters, is in the sun above the heavens and is in the heavens by means of his presence in warmth and light, as I've explained in the last two sections. So a couple of things we should really unpack here. Thing one and thing two. <laughs> thing one, God, that is the Lord. Second is the sun above the heavens. So we don't have, it seems like we've just swapped God's dwelling in that hilarious joke house I talked about earlier into, okay, so right, God is not necessarily in a mansion in the West Hills, but God is up here in the sun of heaven, right? So that's where God is and the rest of us live down here. So if you want to go see God, you just got to get a really, really, really tall ladder and then you can get up to God. But, so what we we're looking at, what does it mean to be in something? Especially since we're looking to have God dwelling in us. And that's what heaven is. So what does it mean to be in something? So God is in the sun above the heavens. And is in the heavens, okay? But not just in, but by means. By means of his presence in the warmth and light. If I, as I have explained in the last two sections. So the sun is the emanating divine. This, the part we can't even really interface with closely, just like physically, you love the warmth and the light that comes out of the sun. You don't want to touch the sun. You don't want to get within a million miles of the sun. The sun is too much for us to handle in its essence. But when we're in the right position, it's the best thing in the world because it allows for the existence of, well, you know, life. So we have this emanation of love and wisdom coming out of God, which are spiritual light and warmth. And that through those, just like you could say, the sun is with us everywhere on earth, because when you're outside, 
everything you're seeing is from the light, is actually things that were in the sun eight minutes ago have zipped through the universe, well, the solar system, bounced off something here and in, went inside your eyeball. That's how much the sun is present. That's the kind of presence God has, not in, in heaven, in spiritual warmth and spiritual light, which is in the love that angels are feeling and in the understanding in their mind. So we've got God living in there. Further, even though the Lord is present in heaven in this apparently distinct way, he is still also intrinsically present there, so to speak. If I, as, as I have just explained in 103 to 112, the distance between the sun and heaven is not a distance, but a virtual distance. And this gets at the nature of the spiritual world and hopefully ties into this thing that it seemed like I forgot, which I did forget for a second, but now I'm remembering. How can you have, and, and to unpack this phrase, he's saying God, that is the Lord. The Lord is Swedenborg's term to refer to Jesus Christ. Now, Swedenborg has a definition of Jesus Christ, which is that it's not a separate son of God, but is God. Jesus is God. And particularly, when we're talking about the Lord, we're talking about God in God as a person, that God is a person. We are people as a sort of an echo. How can we be children of God? And God is something fundamentally different from us. It, we can be different in scale. Like, I get that we're a lot smaller and a lot <laughs> lamer in a lot of ways, but we have to be, to, to have, to actually be offspring of the divine, there's got to be some ratio there. And what Swedenborg says is that people, we're people, actually God is the person, and we are reflections of that. That's why we are people. So you, at once you have this person, which you think of a person in time and space. You think, I'm, where's that person? I'm, I want a high five, but you're over there. So it's not going to happen. You, you relate to somebody through space. So how are you going to have the human God here and also this intrinsic presence that we're talking about here? That is a total mystery. Well, it's what we're about to talk about. And it has to do with this virtual distance that you, you cannot understand how the spiritual world works based on the way just based on the way the physical world works. The physical world, everything, distance is a, a static, stark reality. So is time. But spiritually, it's state. So that while things can still look similar, there's not actual inches or measurements of space separating them. It's closer or farther in state of mind. You start to see hints of this, I think, now with the way that the, the digital world works. Like, I'm pulling up this web page and... It's right here, but it's not here. It's everywhere because any phone can get it. Sure, it's housed in some computer somewhere, but then it's housed. It's it's tending in that direction. And so that, a couple steps up from that is how the spiritual world is. And so you can have God present everywhere, but yet have this distinction. Given the fact that this distant distance is only apparent then, it follows that the Lord himself is in heaven. So yeah, God is here the light and the you can think of it as emanating but somehow also there's just an ambient presence of this person that loves us and wants to take care of us and is the the source of everything good and true okay okay he is and okay how how is he in heaven he is in the love and wisdom of heaven's angels and since he is in the love of wis and wisdom of all the angels and the angels make up heaven he is in all of heaven that's where he's especially present. We here we're sort of thinking like, okay, he's he's here because he's acting like these light rays bouncing off things. But really, in angels, what is it to be an angel? If we're talking about how is this relevant to me, what's the difference between an angel and us here in this mess? It's not really that we're alive and they're dead, <laughs> or they've transitioned into the spiritual world. Sure, that definitely changes how you see or how you experience life, but you can have an angel. You can be as to your spirit, an angel here. What's the real distinction? It's that angels are chock full of the love and the wisdom that God is constantly radiating out. It's like we are plants now that are unable 
to photosynthesize. We don't have any chlorophyll, meaning we are sitting here and this love and wisdom is coming down out of God every second, but we can't convert that into life. Becoming angelic, doing all the spiritual growth stuff that we're supposed to do is the, we gain the ability, we gain the receptors to take a photon of spiritual energy and use it. So they, there's this love and wisdom streaming in from the Lord, and that is what makes heaven. Heaven starts as a place, uh, as, as a state of mind, not a place. It's only heaven because everybody there thinks what's true and loves everything that's good. And that's because that's the Lord. That ability to think what's true and that will to think what's good, that is the Lord, because the Lord is pure that. And so that being in everybody is really the, the anchor of heaven. Everything else, like the, the hills and the valleys and the plains, all is a reflection of that. That's the base point of heaven, and that's where the Lord is really dwelling in heaven. The reason the Lord is not only in heaven, but actually is heaven itself, is that love and wisdom make an angel. And these two are properties of the Lord in the angels. It therefore follows that the Lord is heaven. Heaven is a something that the Lord wants to give to us. It's not a place that you walk into. What we're looking for when we're trying to sort out all the problems of the mind is we want to be in heaven. You might not use that terminology if you don't like christian sounding stuff or that doesn't seem relevant. But what heaven is, is, or the, the I should say the side effects of heaven, are peace contentment, joy, meaning, purpose. It's everything that we're looking for and chasing in this life comes as part of heaven. So this is what the Lord is trying to instill in us. And that state of mind is the Lord with us. I know I already said that, but do you get that distinction? Like the Lord is that kind of happiness. The Lord is that kind of peace. And so when we allow that into us through the work of putting aside everything that would block it, that is heaven. Angels are not angels because of anything that belongs to them. What's the difference between us and an angel? It's not because they have something intrinsic to them that's so awesome. What belongs to them is just like what belongs to us because angels were, were people at one point. Evil. Evil. What belongs to us is evil. I could drill down into that a bit because he said it's not really what belongs to us. It's what belongs to, you know, our ego or, or what he would call hell inside of us, the, the negative side of us, the sort of reflexive, self-centered stuff that's there. This is the, the yeah, ego is, is the way we use ego currently is a great descriptor of it. Everything that when we say, oh, we're only human or well, what's wrong with people, that side of us, there's a tendency towards that stuff that we as our sort of more rational, higher self have to push back against. Angels have that as well. But once you let this love and wisdom in and get to that state, it becomes quiescent. Just check out our last episode of News from Heaven to talk about more about how that happens. But it becomes quiescent to a point where you get this happy existence, which is what we're chasing here. We have all this stuff riling us up and causing problems. What we want to do is get it so that yeah, we can seal that off and bring in what's good and true to a point where we are achieving these states of mind, or at least making progress toward them. The reason this is what belongs to angels and all angels is that all angels were once earthly people, and this attribute clings to them from their birth. It's, it is simply moved aside, and to the extent that it is, they accept love and wisdom or the Lord into themselves. Because think about the way that the stuff coming out of the sun is everywhere. It is everywhere. All you got to do is move out of the shade, and it's there. It's not like it's in short supply and you have to wait for it to come. It's everywhere. With a little elevation of understanding, okay, we'll see if we can do it. Everyone can see that it is quite impossible for the Lord to dwell with angels in anything but what is his. That is what belongs to him, which is love and wisdom. That's interesting. That's not necessarily intuitive, that there's certain things in us that God can dwell in and certain things in us that God can't dwell in. God could be there, but not really living. I know dwell is not really, we don't really talk about dwelling and stuff now, but living is a good, I could visit, but I'm, I'm not going to buy a house there. He cannot dwell in anything that belongs to the angels, which is evil. 
this is why the Lord is in them, and they are angels, to the extent that that evil is moved aside. The actual angelic essence of heaven is divine love and wisdom. This divine reality is called angelic when it is in angels. So again, we can see that angels are angels because of the Lord and not on their own. The same, therefore, holds true for heaven as well. Swedenborg makes this audacious claim that the good love... When, when I say what we have is evil, or when Swedenborg says it, it's automatically going to be this gag reflex from us because we, we, do, we have so many good things in us. We have so much love that we feel for each other. We have so many pleasant and good thoughts that you just can't, you can't just do that. You can't just say that what we have is evil. He makes this audacious distinction that when you're feeling those good thoughts, when you feel that love stirring in you, that actually is, that's coming out of heaven. That is the Lord reaching in, in partnership with us. And on the flip side, when you feel that uh, temper well up in you or that critical thinking welling up in you, that's hell trying to have the same partnership, that, that we exist on this great continuum. So it's not that we're not having good feelings. It's not that we're not doing good things. It's just knowing that, that that's actually, that's what the Lord can dwell in. The Lord can't dwell I'm going to keep with that word. I'm, I'm growing quite accustomed to it. Thank you very much. The Lord can't dwell in me saying, eh, that person tried to do this thing. <laughs> Example time. That person tried to do this thing and they did it way worse than me. Ha ha. They failed. That's great. Or I don't care at all about this person. They're in my way. And so I'm going to try to get rid of them. The, the, where's God going to live in that? Because God loves that person the same. The God is love. For that person. So how are you going to have God? Yeah, we, we're hanging out. You know this. If you've had a friend that you were good friends when you were younger, but maybe you've grown up and the path that they're on, there's some things they're getting into that you feel like, wow, I, I can't be on board with that. It's an, it gets a little awkward. Like what do you, what you look for something to connect on? Or if you've got very divergent, let's say political philosophies or something, and you really feel like, I can't believe they're, they think like that. You, you scan for what, what can we agree on that's good? Like, let's just talk about this. How is God going to dwell in looking callously and cruelly at another person or acting to harm them? Where's, how's God going to live in that? God can live at acting with love and compassion for people, and the only source of love and compassion is God. Just like before electricity, the only real source of light on a big scale, yeah, you can get bioluminescence and fire, but I'm making a point here, please, is, was the sun. I mean, the, the source of energy was the sun. Still, there is no understanding how the Lord is in an angel, and an angel is in the Lord, except through under, knowing what kind of union is involved. It's a union of the Lord with the angel and of the angel with the Lord, so it's a reciprocal union. It says not trying to erase us. This is trying to partner us. This is trying to put us where we belong. You can see, I like to watch basketball, and in basketball you can see there's a really good player, but if they really got a good coach and a good organization behind them, man, could they go farther. This is putting us with the team that we need. On the angel side, it's like this. Angels like us simply feel as though they participate in love and wisdom on their own, and therefore that love and wisdom are theirs, their very own, because we don't necessarily know this is God or feel this is God. It just seems like, I just thought of this, I just felt this. If they did not feel this way, there would be no union. So the Lord would not be in them, nor they in the Lord, because we have to want to participate. We have to say, I'm acting on this. We have to have part ownership. We have to have stock equity in this company. It cannot happen that the Lord is in any angel or people unless they, as subjects of his presence in love and wisdom, sense and feel this as their own. This enables them not only to accept, but also to retain what they have accepted and to love in response. This, we could, man, we could talk about this retaining forever because that's the whole reason why there is freedom in the first place. That, sure, God can put as much love and wisdom out there, can put infinite love and wisdom out there, but none of it will stick with any of us. Again, the plant metaphor. It doesn't matter how much sunlight is going, shining onto the leaf of a plant. Tons and tons and tons. Unless you have that chlorophyll that is able to take a little electron and bring it into the, however that it works, bring it into the plant. 
nothing happens. So the, the, the thing that brings the electron in for us is acting on it, saying as it comes in, not just, oh, I'm, I'm feeling it because this is something that, that's there and okay, but to say, I, n knowing what this is and how this feels, I want to act on this. I want to bring it into being. That's what shapes who we are. That's what does this. This then is how angels become wise and remain wise. So when we're here and we're wanting and chasing this happy life to say when something good does come along, I'm acting on this. I own this. I want to participate in this. Thanks God for this. That's power. Can people decide to love God and their neighbor? Can people decide to gain wisdom unless they feel and sense that they love, learn, and gain their own? If you just, from the beginning, had God telling you, this, do this and you have to. No, we need to be able to weigh this in the theater of life and choose it when it matters. Can they retain, uh, can they retain anything in themselves otherwise? If it were not for this, then the inflowing love and wisdom would have no seat. They would flow right through without making any difference. And as a result, angels would not be angels and people would not be human. They would be virtually lifeless. And this is, this is an important distinction because I do have, come across some people who come across this teaching in Swedenborg. And they just feel like, and it's, it's a complicated thing and I don't understand it in totality. I don't know if you, you can always be learning what exactly are you talking about there. But some people read it as, and I can certainly see why, this is erasing our importance or our sense of individuality to say that the goodness and truth coming into us is from, the go from God rather than something that we somehow subconsciously generate individually. It can't be that because he's saying if we didn't have this, we would be virtually lifeless. So we've got life. And actually life, life that's as individual and unique that, that nobody can be the same as anyone else. Despite God being the source of love and wisdom, Swedenborg is adamant that everybody, there can never be two people who are the same to eternity. So something about the, the part of God's love and wisdom that we can partner with is different than anybody else or the way that we accept light and heat is different than anyone else. It's something that actually, by the time you get to be an angel and your this mindset becomes your reality, when that is the thing that sets the tone and all this darkness that usually tries to mess with us is just pushed out to the periphery, that state, you feel more like your own individual there than we even do here. That you, the greater angelic mindset you grow, the more you just really feel like, I, I am me. Which is this cool little twist on it. It makes sense then that if there is to be union, there must be reciprocity. We start talking about God and we end up talking about how to unite in this way that leads to happiness and heaven. We start talking about where does God live? Well, ideally lives in your happy thoughts and happy feelings. And if we get there, if God lives in there, God can clean house and give us the stuff we all deserve, which is like just to be happy and free from all this negativity. And that's the news from heaven. How do you like it? Was it good for you? Did, did, it, did it make sense? Did it change anything? Did it stir anything? Leave a comment. Let us know because we'd love to know what's reaching people, what's powerful, what's effective. So we put out these ideas sometimes and never anticipate the good that it does for someone. I think it's because if these ideas are representing this truth about how God works in everyone, we just plant the seed through these people hear ideas like this, the seed gets planted, but then some God can stream in and you can, with your unique self that I was just going on and on about, understand this in a particular way and bring it to the world. So leave comments and come hang out with us. We are doing an in-person weekend retreat, the Off the Left Eye Experience. Check out the link there and sign up. We, we, next summer, we get to spend a whole weekend going really deep into this stuff to really get to the heart of it and hopefully start building that bridge, start building that connection with the source of everything good and true. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.